Hey friend, Brandon here. Apple has just released their newest version of iOS called iOS 14. It's um, almost old enough to get a driver's permit. Good morning! As someone who has used Android phones since 2011, starting with the Samsung Epic 4G, I have a lot of experience with Android. I, um... I, I might have a few as well. Anyways, when I heard that the newest version of iOS added a lot of Android-like features and might be enough to convince Android users to switch over to iOS, I had to check it out. So for the past month or two, I've been using the iOS 14 beta and now the public release of iOS 14, and I just wanted to find out if it's all it's cracked up to be. Is it enough for Android fans to switch? Let's talk about it after you hit the like button to make it blue. It's free after all, and this is Tech Today. This video is brought to you by channel sponsor Dbrand and their awesome skins and cases to customize the look of your phone and protect it. You can prevent those smudges and scratches with skin from their pastel series, one of their grip cases, or their limited edition PewDiePie drop. Click the link in the description to find the skin for you. So let's talk about widgets. That's something that's been on Android for quite a while, but just because it's been done first by someone else doesn't necessarily mean that it's better. So let's find out how Apple interprets widgets. So in general, you just have to hold down and everything starts wiggling and you have this little plus sign in the top left corner. And then you can search through all these different uh, widgets here and you can do a smart stack, which is really cool. You just put it up here and you can swipe through a whole bunch of different things all in one stack, which is really neat. And then you can even choose different size widgets if you want to do something like that. And there are even series suggestions where you can just add a little kind of customization of an action on your desktop if you want to do that. And if you're familiar with series shortcuts championed by the brilliant Matthew Casanelli who helped develop it, then you should check out this crazy trend that is spreading all over TikTok and beyond where people are using Siri shortcuts in Widgetsmith to customize their home screens in the craziest way possible. Like this one that makes your phone look like an old Windows computer. And if you're like my roommate, you show off your unhealthy obsession with Animal Crossing. So there are some really neat things there and some customization that goes on. The one thing that really stinks about these widgets is that everything still has to be push to the top so you can't like pin it at the bottom of your screen if you want to. I don't know why um, iOS works this way. Like I can't, I just wanna have it down here where it's easy to use. So that's frustrating. Now, if you've ever used iOS before, you know that home screens are really cluttered. The one benefit of Android is the fact that you can clean it up. You can hide it in the app drawer and things like that. We well, can have that essentially now on iOS. So if you don't want a certain home screen, you can just hold it down on the screen and hit the little dot dots there and you can uncheck a particular screen. So maybe you don't want to see that one anymore and it disappears from your your panels there. And if you want to, you can remove all these icons from your home screen and swipe all the way to the right. And you can see some sort of app suggestions based upon certain categories recently added. Or if you swipe down all the way, you can see the entire app library, kind of like what you would see on Android. On top of that, you can swipe down and you can have your suggestions, which is really nice. And that's also something that you would find on Android. Overall, this is a huge, huge improvement that really adds an experience that's similar to what you would have on Android. I think it's no longer really an excuse that you can use for why you're not going over to iOS. All right, for this next one, I need the AirPod Pros. So we're gonna test out spatial audio and it's a really interesting concept to me as an audio engineer. Apparently you can move your head around and it'll give you a feeling of being in a physical space and the sound adjusting based upon how you move your head. Uh, essentially like if you're at a movie theater, if you had the sound coming from the front and you moved your head around, the sound would kind of move or stay in the same spot while your head is moving around, if that makes sense. So let's check it out. And uh, there's a link to the video that I'm using to test it out in the description. That's crazy. That's weird. Yeah, this is this is actually really cool. It does feel a lot like the experience that I described. Uh, they did a really good job. I don't, I'm not sure what kind of crazy voodoo they're doing, but I, I really like it. But I think it's a really neat idea. I don't know if it's like absolutely practical and I if I would have it on normally because I don't think I need to replicate that real life experience when I have my earbuds in. But I mean, it's cool if you want to do that. Oh, uh, do you hear that? Listen closely. Can you hear it? It's the sound of 90% of you who are not subscribed to the channel. So uh, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you can be notified when I post a new video. I mean, I'd really appreciate it if you did. So we have a video uh, turned on here. Let's go over here and just swipe up. And there's a new feature called picture in picture and you have the ability to resize it. So it kind of operates the way that you would expect where you could just pinch the zoom and move it wherever you want. I actually think this is way better than uh, what you would get on Android. I mean, look how smooth that is. It just kind of goes wherever you want and it works intuitively because of that pinch of zoom. I'm a big fan. 
So with iOS 14 comes a more compact UI. Before, when you would get a phone call, it would take up the whole entire screen. Now on iOS 14, it comes up in this little banner, which is less obtrusive. You can continue to do what you're going to do anyways. And then it also works for FaceTime, which by the way, also has that whole picture in picture thing, which is really convenient. Also Siri's uh, a bit more compact, but um, it's also Siri. So <laughs> and one thing that's really neat, at least in theory, is this whole back tap little feature. Essentially, you just go to the settings, you go to accessibility, and then you go down to touch, and then you go to back tap. And you can do two taps on the back of your phone or three taps on the back of your phone for certain actions. And then maybe I can go to this shortcut like, hey Google, because maybe I want to use the Google Assistant instead of Siri. So you can just go one, two, three, and then uh, the Google Assistant starts up. And, and that sounds really cool in theory. It's kind of a, a thing that initially I was like, oh wow, I'm, I really wish this was on Android, which apparently it's coming to it. It's a nice idea in theory, but when I have it docked in my car dock and it's I'm just driving around and I hit bumps or whatever, it activates it. Or sometimes when I just set it down on the table. So it ends up being really annoying. Now, the big thing that really stinks about iOS has been the fact that you don't have the ability to customize what your default apps are. And in some ways it's changed a little bit. This would apply to your browser browser or your email client, as long as the developer of the app has enabled this. Essentially, you go to your settings and then you scroll down to the app that you want to make the default. So I would go over to Chrome, for instance, and then I would choose it as the default app browser from Safari. Uh, so that's one thing that you can do. I've tried this with other apps and it works with most other browsers, but uh, not all my email clients work. So that's a bit of a bummer. So you have to wait for developers to catch up. It's not going to give you the same experience that you have on Android, which just really stinks. iOS 14 brings about a uh, universal search, which is a, in a way that works to not only find apps if you search for it, but things within an app, like maybe something that you typed up or something on the internet, emojis or things in the text messages that you have or emails, a bunch of different things that are a little bit more deep than just the app names and searching the internet. At first I was thinking, oh wow, search, you finally got search Apple, way to go. But the ability to search for things within your apps is really, really helpful. And unfortunately, it's just not something that you get on Android. With the prevalence of internet of things, or things around your home, you can actually control it here. You can set up a widget for home control so you can activate your lights or turn them off if you want to. I don't really have any HomeKit enabled devices, so I can't really show it off, but it would essentially show up as a little widget down here at the bottom if you wanted to uh, control something easily. And this is something that's shown up in Android 11. I think it's a little bit more intuitive because it's hidden in the power menu bar, and uh, that's just a lot easier for me to find. Here's something that I can really appreciate. It's actually the privacy notifications that iOS 14 brings. So a little dot will pop pop up in the top right corner next to your network icon, and uh, it'll let you know what is being uh, activated or used right now. So right now it has the microphone activated, so there's a little yellow dot there. If I open up the camera, it turns green. Another thing that was added that I really hope comes to Android sometime is this little toast notification that lets you know when an app is reading what is in your clipboard and from where. So if I were able to go to my notes and just copy something from there, and then say go to Twitter, and then uh, started a tweet and went here and pasted from it, it would show that it pasted something from notes. That got TikTok into a little bit of trouble because you could see that it was reading what was in your clipboard. But I think that transparency is a good thing as a whole. Now with messages, we already know that messaging on Android is a hot mess. And unfortunately, it remains a hot mess, at least here in the United States. And iMessage is still the superior option for the majority of us here, and the gap keeps growing. While I can't show you these features on my own phone because of privacy, which ironically we just talked about, you now have the option of pinning up to nine conversations with a specific person or a group chat, which is super convenient. You also have inline reply so you can have a side conversation without derailing a group chat and even mention a specific person. It's like Slack on your phone. I kind of dig that and I think iMessage is great, but too bad it's not on Android. There's also some Memoji thing, so whatever. <laughs> iOS 14 also brings about on-device translation for different languages. Hola, como estas? Forgive my uh, subpar Spanish. And of course you can type in something and it can translate it for you, which is really cool. Now, apparently you can use your phone's NFC to unlock things like your car and your door if it supports that. I'm not gonna lie, it's really cool. Unfortunately, I don't have a brand new car, so I can't test out car keys, so. Now, one thing I do hope that I can test out soon is App Clips. This is a really neat idea because it's like Android's instant apps, but it is centered around the idea of convenience based upon your situation. For instance, if you need to rent a bike and you can hold your phone up to a compatible sign or terminal and the app clip pops up, you can use it for the task at hand, like making a payment without installing anything. Honestly, this sounds really cool because it has a practical convenience to it. And I really like practical and convenient. Too bad I can't try it out because of uh, the pandemic.
So what do I think about iOS 14 overall as a hardcore Android fan? It's a step in the right direction in areas that are typically a pain point for Android users like customization, but it isn't enough steps forward. On the other hand, it leaves me longing for more within Android. iOS 14 has aspects of being well unified with things like universal search, which we first saw on the Palm Pre with WebOS, uh, which goes deeper by searching within apps and messages. Obviously, I love iMessage and AirDrop is great if you use Macs, but with Android 11, we now have Nearby Share, which is a lot like AirDrop but only for Android devices at the moment. I wish that was just a little bit easier between different platforms. The things that continue to just drive me nuts about iOS are the notifications. It's a hot mess that drives me nuts. I miss important things all the time. I just don't understand why this is still a problem with iOS. Then you have Siri, which is overall quite useless, especially when you compare it to Android where the maturity of artificial intelligence and machine learning is seen in really practical ways and admittedly at the expense of your personal information. Android has a sense of knowing what I want and need in ways that I don't see Apple catching up on anytime soon. On top of that, I generally like more of what Android looks like and the depth of customization. There are pros and cons for both sides. And those of you who follow me on Twitter, which you can follow me at This Is Tech Today, you know that I wish both Android and iOS would have a baby, so to speak. And when I say that, I wish that they would merge the best parts of both because there's so much to really love about on both sides for different reasons. With iOS 14, there's the practical benefits of social connection with iMessage and FaceTime, especially in times like these. And that means that I'll at least dual wield and Android phone and an iOS phone. I know, YouTuber life, but I'm really thankful for that. But what do you think? Are you primarily an iOS user or an Android user? What do you think about the new changes in iOS 14? And if you're an Android user, do you find any of these changes compelling? Are you switching to iOS? Let me know your thoughts and why in the comments and in the This Is Tech Today community Discord chat server. We'd love to have you. Thank you for watching This Is Tech Today, where we talk about the intersection of technology in our everyday lives, in business, and in all things creative. Until next time.